but you can kind of see what's going on right here. See that little gap right there? It's because it doesn't sit exactly flush. If you get one side flush, the other side's going to be popped out. Um, and when you go to hold it up like that, because again, like that, I got wedged in there just so I can have it in there so it doesn't move. When you go to move it up like that, so say you say you get that side on, if you look, the other side pops out. So the only way to fix that would be to put like screws right here to hold it in. I tried double sided tape, but there's not tape strong enough to, to, to hold this down because the way it's molded. Also, I had to drill these holes bigger, if you remember from a couple of videos ago, to get these uh, gauges in there because the holes are way too small. And now the gauges, as you can see, loose as hell. So they fall out sometimes like doing boost or regular driving. It's just annoying. And again, it looks it looks tacky. The piece looks good. If you want to modify it in a couple ways, you can get it to sit for us. Like I said, put a screw right here, put a screw on that side. That hold it in. You'd be good to go. But yeah, we're gonna definitely swap it out. Again, I don't like I don't need my gauges popping out like my gauges straight. Not diagonal or anything like that. Definitely not like that. I shouldn't be able to pull it out like that for sure. Um, so I'm gonna shop this out with the original piece. We got a carbon fiber that as you can clearly see it matches this piece right here. They match, love it. So again, I'm not gonna really show too much. All I'm gonna do is unplug it, swap these out, and we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and swap these pieces out. Right, that's the last time on that. So swap them out. Love the size of the gauges, you can read the numbers accurately. A lot better than the original if you guys are wanting the regular series AM gauges. Yeah, a lot smaller. You can see these numbers. I love it. I can actually see what's going on. So again, went for the tempo timer. You guys wonder what that is? Tempo timer uh, to uh, count down, and then the car will ethically die. Hope it's a turbo timer. Obviously, you know when you're running your car with the turbo oil is going through it, it shouldn't really kill your car. And once you're done driving, when it's fair to driving or regular driving, because the oil is too hot and that can actually burn bearings, etc., in the turbo. So you want the oil to cycle through and cool off. That's the purpose of a turbo timer. Yes, you can set the time to different lengths, 30 seconds a minute, etc. This thing also can read AFRs too. So I currently have it right now while I'm driving, it's just reading AFR account like that. But I didn't know I accidentally hit the button and kind of did it, which is awesome. So, by the way, let's swap this out. Love this piece. Now, you guys were wondering, I have it in here. The original Dragon Ball. Let me pull it out. Go find, find it. So you guys can see I'm not joking. I actually have two Dragon Balls. I think I did put it up inside here. Yep, there it is. See, there's the original orange Dragon Ball. I've okay, had the seven star, it gotta be seven star. And then here's the new custom blue blue dragon ball. So you guys can see there's two different dragon balls. Alright, cool. Let's swap it out right fast. Alright, as you guys can see I got everything unplugged. There you go. That's a AMX series gauge. You guys are wondering what I was talking about. The X series is like that's all the gauge. The old gauge used to extend like out the heel of my finger is. So that's the that's the new the new X series gauges. They're like a quarter of the size. You got like that much lift to hook on to. So yeah, we're gonna test with these gauges in here. Make sure we're nice and snug and tight. And let's swap this out. There you guys go. A lot better. This one's a tad bit loose, but not as loose as it was in that one. So if I have to, what I end up what I end up doing, you guys can kind of see me turn it with one hand. I can get a piece of like a small piece of wood, attach it to these screws right here, and from this side to this side, that would make it tight if I have to. We'll test with it and see how it goes. Again, I just don't want the gauges falling out. That's just me. It's tacky as hell. So okay, cool. So we're gonna swap it out, pull this one out, swap it out, hook everything back up, test it, make sure we're good to go. Pretty simple. Nothing difficult about this. I'm assuming, as you can see, this is to make it thicker. See how it extends it out? You can slide this bar left and right. So essentially, I can do what I want to do. Pinch it inside this hole so it can fit inside any hole. Kind of see it like that. At an angle, kind of, sort of, like that. It'll stick out. That way, it fits a little bit more tighter. Because right now, to be honest with you, that one is fine. But this one is, like, loose. A little bit, still loose. Shake it a little bit, it'll still fall out. So hopefully, this should solve the problem. Because, again, I can move this bar left to right. This comes with the gauge, uh, the X-Series. Now, for reference, just so you guys know. So you guys know, I had all the series. This is the old wide band gauge right here. See how long it is? How thick it is? 
So it would actually, you put it in any type of gauge pod holder, so it would actually catch on onto this, and, and as long as it is, and it, you'd have to, it had to be wiggling pretty hardcore for it to come out. Unlike this one, it's not even, it's not even like half an inch long. So that's probably why this bar came in. I'm sure most gauge pod holders, you might not have to install this bar, but I'm assuming that's why this bar is included because the majority of them, the gauge will slip out. So we're gonna go ahead and test fit inside here and uh, mess with this back to slide it so we can get it pinched so that way it's gonna be nice and tight. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys the old gauge pod. You can also see they did change a lot from the X series, the new one. The, from the uh, old to new. So that one only goes to 16. This one goes from 8 to 20, 11. And you also can see, I don't know how well you can see it. That's where the is display information used to be nice and small. Now with the new one, you got this big old area. Uh, I mean, there's a, a, a couple other things you can do with this gauge, which is the old one. See, that one has buttons, this one doesn't, etc. But anywho, let's throw this in there and uh, make sure that uh, this thing is uh, And bam, voila. See that? That coming off. That's how it looks on the back. The bar is exactly what that bar is for, guys. Pinch the sides, depending upon your gauge pot holder, so it makes it nice and tight. Can't really hardly do this on one hand. See? Look at that. Not coming out. So that's what that's for. So I actually have one for this one. This one, the boost gauge is actually pretty tight. I mean, I could throw it back there, so I don't have to worry about it. But again, if I if I shake it like that, boost gauge isn't coming out. Unlike the AFR seems to be a little bit a little bit smaller was so I'm gonna hold on to that bar for the uh, true boost true boost seems to be fitting perfectly fine if I have to I can always uh, disassemble like quick and so it's throw the bar on the back of this one but yeah that's what that bar is for so I was wondering what that bar was in there for uh, so those of you guys wondering like myself hey what is that for that's exactly what it's for the hold your gauge in the place if your pod happens to be a little bit too uh, too wide or it says it's 52 but it's, you know maybe like 53 or something like that cool all right unless i need today go ahead and take this old one out and swap them out now i got them both plugged in obviously you gotta, you gotta take the bar at the back to plug it in because there's just no room you want to test it make sure i got power before i put this all back together and something came loose and there we go everything's heating up as it should let's make sure windshield wipers <laughs> turn those off just making sure things powering up and this may not heat up because the car is not turned on but there it goes all right there we go cool all right just wanted to make sure before i put this all back together uh that had power and stuff all right again test 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 don't just do it put it all back together then all oh, got an issue and i gotta rip everything apart that's just a waste of time all right wait for the tower time to die and we're going to we're going to screw this bar into the back of it which will hold this tight and i can go ahead and finally set this into place looks really good really good bam here we go it's done it's installed obviously i'm gonna go for a quick drive right quick you guys can see it in the light but yeah it's fully installed looks good way better way flush this is the accelerate uh, v2 pod if you guys are wondering that i had uh we done in uh this carbon fiber to match the shift that you guys saw us do uh last time and like i said this is the xr vr racing carbon fiber pod probably well this is all tape as you guys can see i had tape underneath it just so you can see i did put tape stronger beside the tape to try to hold it down and just just not working really need right here these really need a, a little clips to clip into the factory oem ones like the accelerate one and that would help it to hold down so that that's an idea too that's a thought that uh could get done as well uh for this one but either way it's a good show piece i might put it for sale cheaper if somebody wants to tinker with it and get it done but uh yeah i'm way more happy with this so let's go ahead and let me go get my wallet and my keys um uh, let's go for a quick drive make sure everything's holding up fine got this as straight as i want it i think that i can make that a little bit straighter but i'm actually okay okay with that as long as when i read the numbers the numbers are, are good it's not like diagonal and that's nice and tight cool all right let me get my keys uh my wallet my license so go for a quick drive all right there you go 
with that being at a slight angle, that's fine by me. That one's perfectly straight. I could take it apart and straighten it up, but that's fine. Good to go. Uh, screen going. We're just going to go for a quick drive. I'm pretty sure things will be fine. Nothing's going to be rattling off and like that. Let's get it in the sunlight so you guys can check it out. Oh, I love this short shifter. And you guys did see I do actually have a hybrid racing short shifter because people are asking. this install I don't know if I'm gonna mix this together with other videos or make this a standalone video I mean this wasn't that hard of an install so much behind me of course uh, but uh, I want you guys to go ahead and click like and subscribe if you guys have any questions click down below if you guys want to see anything just let me know uh, again we got more stuff coming up more stuff coming up my custom order finally got shipped out so hopefully that should get here not about the wind hopefully that should get here uh, this coming uh this coming week so we can get that thrown in there's more awesome parts to throw into the car i got all right guys click like and subscribe anything you guys want to see click down below now some of you guys are gonna comment hey would you get this done blah, blah. you guys always say that always have all those links in those in the description or if you guys ask i always tell you guys where i got products from but yeah now you can see it in the sunlight it looks freaking amazing all right guys see you guys next video okay front cam uh match is all good to go Soon enough, we're gonna get rid of this plastic. We got one more install to do, and I can finally take them off. Because again, that's just me trying just to protect the uh, seats in the car. All right, guys, later. Peace. What's up? Dropping up, dropping up at the paint shop. One final time, they're gonna go through it. There's a Honda right there. They're gonna go through it, and they're gonna correct all the spots that are messed up. And one thing that they messed up, and we're gonna get this perfect. This is gonna be like the final paint job. Um, this shop really doesn't, uh, this particular Mako, I know some Makos do, but this particular Mako doesn't uh, really specialize in doing custom work, but because I'm a good customer, they did. So it's going to be the last time that we get the work done to the Z of this cow. But besides that, I'm kind of done with paint and paint and body, all that stuff. Pretty much good to go with both cars. Both cars are in a good position. I don't need that anymore. <laughs> For now, I just got to get the rid of the fees. I'll figure that one out. We'll tackle that one later. I'm just going to show you guys what's wrong um with the uh z and what's going to get corrected and uh for you guys for me it's going to be a little bit before they get this done for you guys it'd be like that so one they had some elbow spray right here as you can clearly see they elbow sprayed it two i'm thinking about going black inside inside here where the lights are at pretty much gonna go black inside here that's one right there this one's gonna be hard to sell maybe i can get it right, right here there's a little bit of over spray of clear coat they spray a little bit too much clear they got to sand that down the biggest one is on a side skirt I mean, yeah, the biggest one is right here i don't want to hit the land over <laughs> right here on the side skirt right there let me get the camera down you see that the notch when they're installing their side skirts the guy put the drill too close as you can see the screw right there and he put some of the drill on this so they gotta fix that they're gonna uh fix that on the back portion right here you might be able to see it kind of like right there. there's a little bit of red the overspray so they're gonna respray all these black again and then the final one, get them to buff that out, clean that up right there. Uh, that's the biggest things. Um, and you get down to Z. See everything else is done. Everything else that's supposed to be painted black is black. The fees is on. Um, the same thing on this side. Even though this this one's good, they're gonna repaint this black since they're, since they're at it. So those are the major things. Um, again, a different shot to the door handles. But other than that, we're gonna drop this thing off. Let them run to it. We spray, we spray everything. We clear everything. We'll be good to go on the Z. This will be a top notch project. Get this thing dropped off so they can get to work on it. Get those spots uh, touched up, fixed up. And we'll be done with uh, paint work for like a while. Painting body. Get tired of dropping off, the, dropping off the, the cars and the gun for a little bit. So I'm glad I'm at the end of it. The Honda's in a, a public spot again just to rid the fuser on that one. I got to figure that one out. I got, they still have it. I got to pick it up sometime. But the main thing is get this one done so we're done with that main stuff so those are the major things that are, are wrong uh 
with the uh, the Z, uh, all of which that uh, they touched on. Again, you guys know what's going on. I had to pull the Z out before they could finish like all this stuff. So just bringing it back so they can finish everything up, and then uh, we can have this thing back and we can work on something something else with with the 370 Z. All right, see you guys at Mako. Calling Uber to come pick me up on the way to uh, Mako. As you can see right there, I'm gonna drop this car off. Uh, fix all the spots we we're talking about and we'll be done. There was a boost at the FRS and then getting that video that just passed me. I'll be at this performance shop down here. So let's drop this car off and uh, call a Uber. Uh, make a paint and body.